Chapter 7 of A Boy and a Bear in the Boat Tea Time The boy was doing nothing very much and had been for some time. He thought perhaps now he would do nothing at all for a while, just for a change. The bear had rowed for all of that time and so, presumably, they had travelled quite a long way even though you wouldn't know it from the view. The boy had spent a long time gazing at the sea. He had counted waves for a while, but lost interest after the first 400 or so. He was roused from his bored days by the bear, suddenly freezing mid-stroke. His oars hung motionless above the water. A strange, wide-eyed expression on his face, as if something had just struck him. What is it? said the bear. It's four o'clock, said the bear. The boy had no way of knowing it any different. And, he said, time for tea, said the bear. He stopped rowing and pulled the oars part way into the boat. Then he stood, turned, leaned down and pulled out his suitcase and placed it in the middle seat. With dainty precision, he removed from the smut case a small gas stove, a box of matches, a small battered and blackened kettle a china teacup and a cup and a saucer. Then he filled the kettle with water from a large plastic bottle. Then he lit the stove. This was no simple matter as the bear appeared to be, quite simply, afraid of fire. First he opened the box of matches, then he took out a match then he closed the box of matches. Then he put the matchbox down with the top match off top of it next to the stove on the seat. Then his face screwed up with concentration. He held the blue band canister of the stove steady with one paw at arm's length. While he gasped the knob to turn the gas on with the other. He was panting, just a little. The boy noticed and very slightly quivering. Then he turned the knob, the tiniest fraction of a turn, grabbed quickly for the match and the matchbox, struck the match and held the flames to the burner. His face turned away and his free paw shielding his face. The gas ignited pathetically into the tiniest blue flame. The bear let out a deep breath. Then he placed the kettle on the stove and turned up the heat so that the flame grew with a small roar. There was a whistle shaped like a bird at the end of the kettle's spout that sang shrilly when the water boiled but not for a long, as the bear watched closely and quickly turned the gas off. He used a little of the water to warm the teapot, swirling it around and then discarding it into the sea. Then he heaped three teaspoons of loose tea leaves from a scratched and rusty tin, filled the pot from the kettle, replaced the lid and lovingly clad the pot in a pink woolly tea cosy with a pom pom on the top. Then he reached beneath his seat and brought out a strangely shaped black case. He opened it up and took out something that looked at once familiar and 
up to the boy. What's wrong with your guitar? asked the boy. Did it get wet and shrink? The bear gave him a stern look. It's not a guitar, he said. It's a ukulele. I tie my tea with a song. He plucked at the strings and adjusted the tuning. Then he began to play and sing. When you are all at sea, you have a friend in me. We'll have a cup of tea and keep on go o o ing The wealthy may be poor, the weather may be poor, with rain and wind and more. What fun we just adore, it's when it's snowing. You fear that you'll be drowned, the sharp things circle round. So what, we're homeward bound, and we're not slowing. And if the current's strong, and the dark cold night is long, who cares, we'll sing our song, and just keep rowing. Mostly, the bear strummed a very simple accompaniment to his singing. But between the final two verses, he played quite a long, complicated instrumental section. This wasn't something that he found easy, judging by the faces that he pulled. He was obviously concentrating very hard and the boy had to concentrate quite hard not to laugh. When it was over, the boy put the, u- the bear put the ukulele away, removed the tea cosy, and poured tea into his teacup. Would you like some? he said to the boy. No thanks, said the boy. He'd never been able to see the point of tea. Even if you added loads of sugar, it was still Boring. Then the bear lifted the delicate china cup to his mouth, blew gently over the surface of his steaming contents and took a tiny sip. Ah, sighed the bear. There he is, drinking his lovely cup of tea. And he smiled and stared into space wound an expression of deep contentment that he retained for the next quarter of an hour as he consumed one small and loudly appreciated sip at a time. The rest of the contents of the cup. When he was done, he used the last drop of water from the kettle to rinse the cup out, emptied out the teapot into the sea, put everything neatly away and took up his oars once again, beaming with happiness. The boy watched him and tried a smile himself. He was just about to manage it, but it was a bit of an effort. And we'll find out what happens tomorrow. Have a lovely evening. Bye for now.